Welcome back students. In this video, we're going to look at an addition reaction called acid catalyzed hydration. Here's the general reaction for acid catalyzed hydration. You're going to start with an alkene and add water along with some acid. There's a couple of ways to write the acid. Sometimes people will just write H plus in brackets. Other times people will write H3O plus. Sometimes people will write H2SO4. There's a bunch of ways to do it. Just make sure that you can identify the way that your teacher or your textbook most commonly writes it. What you're going to find in acid catalyzed hydration is a OH group and a hydrogen are going to add across the pi bond. Now I want to look at regiochemistry, stereochemistry, carbocation rearrangement, and an equilibrium idea. The mechanism is going to explain the regiochemistry, so let's look at both at the same time. If you have an alkene that's asymmetrical, the OH is going to add to the more substituted side, and remember we called that the Makarovnikov product or a Makarovnikov addition. When we look at this mechanism, your pi bond is going to come in, it's going to attack that proton, and those electrons between oxygen and hydrogen are going to go onto the oxygen. When we draw the subsequent structure, we need to pause and think. There's two possibilities of what could happen. Your hydrogen can add here, which would make your carbocation at a tertiary position, or your hydrogen could add here, which would make your carbocation secondary. We already know that tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary, so the first compound that I drew is what's going to actually occur because that one is more stable. So that secondary one, I'm going to go ahead and erase that. Now that we have a more stable carbocation, water is going to come in and behave as our nucleophile. So water is going to come in, it's going to attack the carbon that bears that positive charge. So the one that has the carbocation. When that happens, now you have water attached here. And remember, you still have a hydrogen on that side. Notice how we said this was an acid catalyzed reaction. Well, the definition of a catalyst is it gets regenerated throughout the course of the reaction. What that means for us is we better show in our mechanism that the acid is getting regenerated. It got used right here, and now we need to start illustrating how it gets recreated. One of the keys is when you have water in your solution, you have lots of water, and this is something that students often forget. Even if your teacher just showed that you had aqueous acid instead of illustrating that there was water over the reaction arrow, you would still have plenty of water because one liter of water contains 55 moles of water, right? So 55 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water are in one liter. Are you using a liter? No, but what that means is when you have a very small amount of water, you still have boatloads of water molecules. Therefore, I've got plenty of water floating around in solution that can go ahead and do this and pull off a proton here. When this happens, notice how I started with water, it's pulling off a proton, now I'm going to get H3O+. Plus. And I started with H3O+, plus as my catalyst, so my mechanism is illustrating that my catalyst is regenerating, and that's always a great feeling. Now I'm showing my OH, adding to the more substituted side, where it's just OH and not a protonated OH, and that I just created H3O+. If you want, you can still stick in that hydrogen if it makes you feel good. By the time you take a test, I would really like you to be at the point where you don't have to put in that hydrogen. And you need to be cautious about your online homework. Your online homework, the computer might mark you wrong if you start drawing just one proton on a carbon instead of the other one as well. Now that we've identified that this is a Makarovnikov addition where the OH adds to the more substituted side, let's also look at stereochemistry. So this reaction involves a carbocation intermediate. 
when we know a reaction involves a carbocation intermediate, what we recognize is that your carbocation is sp2 hybridized. What that means is we have an unhybridized p orbital where the nucleophile can attack both from this side and also from this side. Because we have equal possibility of attack from both sides of that p orbital, this translates into a potential of both enantiomers forming. So if you have a chiral center on your product where that OH added, then you're going to get a pair of enantiomers at the end. So let's write that down. So if the reaction produces a chiral center you'll get both enantiomers. Now let's look at carbocation rearrangements. Because we have a carbocation as an intermediate in our mechanism, we always need to be on the lookout for potential carbocation rearrangements. Let me show you what I mean by illustrating this in another mechanism. The first step, remember, is your pi bond attacking the hydrogen of your acid catalyst. This then breaks and the excess electrons go onto the oxygen. Now, when we form your carbocation, your hydrogen is going to add to this position because that gives you a secondary carbocation. If your hydrogen were to go to the other side, which it won't, if it were to go here, then you'd get a primary carbocation. That's not happening. Nope, I'm just erasing that right away. Not going to happen. Primary carbocations are not stable enough. Now I need to look at this and ask myself, if this is my alpha position, here are my beta positions. If my positive charge is able to move to one of those beta positions, does it make the carbocation more stable? And the answer is yes this hydrogen here can shift over to that middle position and when that occurs now you've left a hole where that hydrogen was so my hole is now here at this time my nucleophile which is water can add and you end up getting your OH at that more substituted side. And remember, it's still protonated. And now a new water molecule needs to come in and pull off that proton so that you just have an alcohol at the end and not a protonated alcohol because we need to illustrate the recreation of our acid catalyst. So now we have an OH here and we recreated H3O+. We've talked about this before, but let's say it again. Carbocation rearrangements happen really quickly. They happen within the molecule, and so those intra-molecule uh, changes happen a lot more fast than an outside molecule coming in and attacking. That being said, you can't stop the nucleophile from attacking this carbocation before it's rearranged. It can still happen. So this would be the minor product. This is your major because you always have the major product be the one that's after your carbocation rearrangement. But you also have the possibility of the nucleophile attacking before that carbocation can rearrange, which would make a potential for some minor products. And I say products because notice how we have created a chiral center at that carbon. And so we would end up getting two uh, compounds, a set of enantiomers, if we had nucleophilic attack happen before the carbocation was able to rearrange. So these ones would be your minor products. This reaction that we just went through, where we start with an alkene and some water and some acid to make an alcohol, looks a lot like the opposite of what we did in the elimination chapter. In the elimination chapter, we started with an alcohol and a beta proton 
and we made an alkene. And if you look back, both of these reactions utilized acid. So how does this work? And it has to deal with concentration. So the equilibrium for these reactions is going to be concentration dependent, where the concentration of the acid is what drives one reaction or the other. So if we're looking at trying to create an alcohol, we're going to add dilute H2SO4 or dilute acid because we need water in there in order for us to make the alcohol. Whereas if we add concentrated acid and usually some heat, we can take the alcohol and we can undergo one of the first reactions that you learned, that elimination reaction, where you make the alkene at the end. Let's wrap up. In this video, we looked at acid catalyzed hydration where we considered how we can add H and OH across a pi bond. This was a Makarovnikov reaction, meaning that the OH went to the more substituted side. Because you formed a carbocation, you should be looking out for carbocation rearrangements. And because you formed a carbocation, if your final product created a chiral center, then you should have a pair of enantiomers. And if you start looking at this reaction and elimination reactions and get confused because they both utilize acid, remember that it's concentration dependent. So the concentration of the acid drives which reaction is going to happen. Thanks so much for your attention. This is Katoni, signing out.